Welcome everyone to a bonus episode of What Do You Say with DDJ. As always, I'm your host DDJ. Uh, this bonus episode is dedicated to the memory of Joe Laurinaitis, who uh, wrestling fans know as Road Warrior Animal. We unexpectedly lost him at the age of 60 uh, late Tuesday night. And this episode is a tribute to Hawk and Animal, uh, who are my all-time favorite tag team. Uh, joining me on this bonus episode is Paul Myers, who Chicago fans will know as a shot to the top PL Myers, who happened to be uh, the guest on my very first episode. But tonight we're just we're not talk we're not chatting at, under gimmicks or anything. We're just ch- two guys uh, telling stories, sharing memories of. The, our all-time favorite tag team, the Road Warriors. So please sit back, relax, and enjoy this little uh, tribute to the Road Warriors on this very special bonus episode of What Do You Say with DDJ. Alrighty, everyone. Welcome to this very special bonus episode of What Do You Say with DDJ. Uh, this episode is going to be a tribute to the Road Warriors. As pretty much everybody should know by now, we unfortunately lost Road Warrior Animal uh, late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. Uh, this is being recorded on Thursday. Uh, with me tonight is my very dear, close, personal, longtime friend, uh, Paul Myers, who you remember from episode one, the shot to the top, P.L. Myers. Uh, Paul is a very uh, big fan of the Road Warriors and actually uh, was friends with them. And he, I figured it would be nobody more appropriate to uh do this episode with and uh paul so paul thanks so much for joining me tonight oh thank you i think uh you know tonight i i take off the pl myers persona and talk about from paul myers the fan because i think that's where we all started we all start out as fans with the road warriors you know we i tell people i said you know hulk hogan was like your first toy you're like teddy bear then you go to toys r us and then you see the road warriors the four horsemen rick flair the list goes on and, you know, and those guys just, it just clicked with the road warriors. You know, they were different. They looked different. They acted different. They were just, uh, you know, as Paul Ellering said, they were like a, a car crash and, you know, to, to actually watch them. And then, you know, you start collecting like my very first poster back here um, that has Hawk animal and El- Ellering up there. Um, that's actually signed by all three when we brought him in for um, the 20 year anniversary show. And uh, you know, that's like your first memory. And uh, you know, my room was full of the road warrior posters and, you know, I went to watch him on television, you know, uh, TBS, uh, Superstation 605. And, you know, it just, you were enamored with them and what they did was something different. And then you start watching some of their old stuff from AWA and, find out all their legacies and stuff. And, you know, I went to the, uh, my first time I saw them live was at the UIC pavilion. Uh, They were in the six man match in a cage match versus the horsemen for the six man NWA heavyweight championship belts, which they won that night. So, you know, as a fan of the road Warriors, I remember growing up and uh, at one Halloween's I dressed up as Hawk. I had the face paint on and stuff. And, you know, they were both just larger than life, you know, uh, and there was something special about them that made it magic. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, because uh, they were definitely one of a kind. There's definitely nobody else like them. So um, so I'm going to tell you about the first time I saw them on TV. And then, you know, if you could tell the audience, about, again, about your impressions the first time you thought them on TV. Um, first time I ever remember seeing them on TV. Um, I didn't get into wrestling until it was like late 1990, early 1991. Yeah. So they'd already, they were already in the WWF at the time. And I remember, I think it was an episode of wrestling challenge or superstars. One of the programs that they would have on uh, WFLD, uh, like either Saturday or Sunday morning. And there was this uh, big tag team battle Royal. I think it was in either February or March of 91 and it had literally all the tag teams and the winning team would go on to face the Hart Foundation at WrestleMania 7 for the tag team titles 
and it came, I think it had come down to um, the the Legion of Doom and the Nasty Boys. Nasty Boys yeah. Yeah, and I believe uh, the Legion of Doom had just eliminated Power and Glory, but Power and Glory came back and screwed, you know, the Legion of Doom out over, you know, allowing the Nasty Boys to win and go on to uh, challenge for the belts at WrestleMania 7. The one thing I do remember, though, as a result, uh, I believe it was under a minute, but they would go on to get their revenge at WrestleMania 7 and beat them in like like something like 50-some-odd seconds. And I'm thinking, God, these guys are just just amazing. So... Um, again, uh, share the story of the first time you saw them on TV and your thoughts. Well, the first time I saw them on TV was, uh, back with, uh, TBS and that was, you know, in the studio. And I think that was just something where you just were like, who are these guys? Cause they, they didn't, cause again, when you're watching WWF back then, when it was called that, you know, you had a lot of the people, like I grew up watching in like from WrestleMania one on, right. Actually my first pay-per-view I went to see. Uh, at the Vic Theater was WrestleMania, uh, WrestleMania two. So the thing is, is that when you're watching, you didn't see all these other uh, companies like World Class and you know NWA and AWA. So when I saw them on television the first time, it wasn't anything. You know, they didn't have this great match. It was just a car crash. They just came in and beat up these two guys, and you're like, wow, because they didn't fit the look of anybody else. They didn't come in because I mean. Even when you're watching WWF, you saw certain matches, but no one just steamrolled over what the Road Warriors did. Right. Um, so, okay. So, obviously, you know, I you again, you got to see them in their heyday when you be, you know when you became a fan. Me, on the other hand, again, like I said, I didn't start watching them until they were already in the WWF. So I didn't really fully grasp how good they were, and until and I want to say, till. Basically, I want to say till like right out of after high school, once I really started getting into the older stuff, I remember, and I was actually thinking about this uh, today, I did a, uh, my junior year in high school, I did a, uh, we always had like a, I took a criminal justice class and we had to write, uh, we had like a daily writing assignment or something like that. And we had to write so much. And then if we wanted to, we could write about anything. And I wrote about at the time how I felt uh, that, Demolition was the greatest tag team of all time because they were the coolest guys I'd ever seen. I wrote a paper, but mine was on the Road Warriors, and I got a B-plus on that one, why the Road Warriors were the greatest tag team of all time. Well, let me finish. Since that paper, because actually my teacher at the time, he was like, uh, he was actually like a student teacher for the actual teacher. And he and I would actually get into daily debates about this and stuff because he was a huge Road Warriors fan. But – after I'd gotten a chance to really go back and watch a lot of their older stuff, especially through the WWE network and even before that and stuff, I totally did a 180 and I'm with you. Road Warriors, greatest tag team of all time. Well, and the thing is that keep this in mind, you weren't exposed to other teams. And that's the thing. It's like, it's kind of like when you are the, the greatest, you know, the greatest wrestler on your, in your neighborhood, and then you go to the next city over and find out, wait, I'm not as good as them or, wow, there's someone bigger than me, you know, it, that's what it is. And, you know, it's like, you know, when we're all watching wrestling, we don't see other things. And then when we see it, we go, wow, this is something different. And it gets you, gets your knowledge, uh, you know, the more you know, the better you can debate certain things. And again, if you're only exposed to demolition, which again, at the time was the, the was the ripoff of the road words, but mm -hmm. you look at the two guys that were the, was demolition, two solid athletes, that had great careers before they came to WWF or WWE and, you know, mass superstar, Bill Eady, you know, uh, along with, uh, you know, his partner, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just one of those things where that's what Vince McMahon was trying to do. He was trying to create his own road warriors with demolition. Right. Right. So, so, uh, so tell the audience again, if, uh, if you're new to this show, uh, uh, Paul was the guest on my very first episode, and we actually spent a lot, spent some time talking about uh, the Road Warriors because of his connections. Uh, and uh, I'm going to get into how Paul here actually made it possible for me to meet the Road Warriors. Uh, but I'm going to, before I go into that story, I'm going to let uh, Paul uh, share some stories about his time with the Road Warriors. So, Paul, the floor is yours. Well, the thing is that, you know, again, as Paul Myers, not P.L. Myers, 
you know, I'm a fan of the Road Warriors. I, I get their merchandise. I get their posters. I got the, the action figures. And, you know, you see them live. And then 96, uh, actually 90, which is true story, 90, uh, 95, I met Road Warrior Animal. Road Warrior Animal was doing a uh, Special Olympics event um, at the Rosemont Horizon. Uh, they were doing on the floor where they had all, and he was, he was uh, there, uh, had the pictures and autographs and stuff. And I didn't know you could bring your own stuff, but I met him. I'm like, hi, what's your name? Paul. Oh, okay. You know, animals always business. You know, that's the one thing if you, some of the interviews I've done with animal uh, has always been business. He's always been about the business. So when I, Met him, it was like, oh, great, I got Road Warrior Animals autograph. The next year, 96, at the Illinois Special Olympics event again, which was held at the convention center, I met Hawk. So I actually brought the uh, six man, uh, not the six man, the Crockett Cup pitchers, like a five by seven of them with the belt, uh, the uh, Crockett Cup. So uh, I met Hawk. I actually interviewed him. I started my television show, Hero TV, uh, interviewed Hawk. Uh, and I go, this guy's, you know, you always try and press your heroes. And Hawk was of the two. Animal was business and Hawk was the guy that every, a lot of people drifted to because he was very likable. Not that Animal wasn't, but Animal was a business guy. You didn't mess with him. Um, so I go up to him and go, this guy's won six different championships, the Crockett Cup, this guy's a legend. He looks in the camera and goes, how do you not like this guy? He knows everything. Um, and that's where our friendship started. And then after that, um, I met Hawk again and um, – no, I actually met the Road Warriors at WrestleMania 13 in Chicago, did an interview with them, which was featured on Dark Side of the Ring. All the clips of Hawk's interview was on Dark Side of the Ring, was from the interview I did at Gold's Gym two days after WrestleMania um, with Animal and Hawk. And you can see how uh, Animal's talking about how WCW treated him wrong, why they're in the WF. Um, then I interviewed Hawk again. And then, lo and behold, um, I became a manager in 2000. Uh, for I started off with PWI and LWF, and then uh, in 2000, uh, I became uh, 2001, joined PCW, and in October, uh, I managed the Road Warriors in Chicago. That was the deal. Um, a friend of mine, Bob Morenin, who uh, works Wrestling Figs a website uh, with news and wrestling figures information, um, hooked me up with the uh, appearance. Uh, the story was P.L. Myers um, hired the Road Warriors to be our hitmen uh, because uh, Flyboy TK was the guy I uh, managed and Dave Storm and Wally Wild interrupt uh, a TK's celebration. So I hired the Road Warriors to go beat them up. So it was a three-way dance, uh, October 20th, uh, 2001 uh, at the Oakland Pavilion. We had over 900 people. Uh, Hawk and Animal were great. The, the place went ballistic. And then lo and behold, at the end of the match, P.L. Myers was not happy with the Road Warriors beating up the wrong person. So I grabbed Hawk. Well, grabbed Hawk grabbed me and body slam, uh, uh, threw me in the corner. Animal body slammed me. And Hawk came off the top rope and landed on me. So that was my first experience managing the Road Warriors because I believe uh, besides myself, Paul Ellering, Sonny, and I believe also I saw a picture with Jimmy Hart. So there's four of us that have actually managed the Road Warriors. So there's only four people. And an inside story, because unfortunately Vince McMahon has pulled back the curtain on the business. Um, when Animal picked me up, uh, he pretty much deadlifted me. Deadlifted me mm. uh, and, and spotty slammed me. And he goes in the back and goes, you know what? In my how many years in the business you're the heaviest piece of you know what i've ever had to pick up <laughs> more than jerry blackwell so uh wow that was, that's saying something that was my badge of honor because as a manager a, a rookie manager i just didn't quote push at the right time but um and then we brought him back for dream night one at elmhurst college where mr perfect was there uh showed up right after he got let go from the wf with his the airplane incident with uh, brock lesnar uh, Seth Rollins, that was his first independent wrestling show ever. Uh, who sh he showed up to Dream Night One, so that was his first ex taste of watching an independent show. Um, and then Dream Night Two was the 20-year anniversary of the Road Warriors, 20 years to the day 
And one day we brought them in, we brought them in uh, Paul Ellering, um, Hawk and Animal together for the PCW tag titles. Um, they were in a three-way dance with the Grave Diggers and CIA. Road Warriors went over. Uh, that was their seventh championship they won together with Paul Ellering. They've won a lot of different championships, but not with Paul Ellering. Right. So this was so special. And then, unfortunately, October 19th, uh, 2003, Hawk passed away. Um, after that, we brought back Animal um, um, for Dream Night uh, 3 with Dusty Rhodes. Uh, Paul Ellering was also there. Um, so uh, our connections with Animal have always been there. And I've always appreciated, you know, him putting somebody over and helping a company out. So Animal is always a class act, always business. Uh, my friendship with Hawk, everybody knows about, um, spoke at his funeral, um, uh, touched with the family, and then, you know, um, done anything I can for any of the, you know, Ellering and Animal too. So it's, it's one of those sweet moments, uh, bittersweet moments when you get the phone call um, and find out that Hawk passed away, I found out at work. And then um, I got the uh, message from you know who, which I don't know. That would remember. be me. That would be you, um, about, an, about Animal, which just shocked me because at 60 years old, um, he wasn't the partier of the, of the duo. You know, he, he was in, to best of my knowledge, good health. Um, I guess he went away for the anniversary with his wife, mm -hmm. uh, passed away, you know, it's just, it's just gone too soon. And, you know. Yeah. And I mean, for me, it was really shocking and, and stuff because like you said, you know, I didn't know, you know, of anything going on with animal where he was in bad health or anything. Um, like I said, I had just gotten done with my morning walk and was eating breakfast when I found out. And then not too long after that was when I reached out to you to see if you had heard yet. Um, you mentioned Dream Night 2, and I kind of want to go back to that because this ties into the story I alluded to a little while ago about how you made it possible for me to basically hang with the, the Road Warriors and Ellering for the day. Um, you were, uh, I came in, I think I was helping you sell tickets for that show, Dream Night, and you had invited me, you know, to be, you know, to the show. Um, I actually got to have uh, breakfast. I think you were there, uh, Frank Rodriguez, and a few other people along with uh, Hawk and Ellering. We all had breakfast that morning and, you know, sitting down and talking with Hawk and, you know, him questioning my masculinity because of just something we were talking about in a joking manner and hearing Paul Ellering's stories of the Iditarod and stuff. That was just an unbelievable start to the day. And I'm going to fast forward to a little bit. Um, going to the hotel where they were staying at that night, I think you were getting ready to go off to the gym or something. And I was just going to chill until it was time to go. And I remember walking in the hotel and seeing animal at, you know, waiting to check in. And I was not going to lie. I was deathly afraid to go up to him and introduce myself because he was just such a big guy. And I just like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to bother him. I want to just, I want to let him be. But I remember talking to him a little bit later. I think it was before the show or whatever. And I think we were getting ready to leave and they were supposed to follow me to the show. Um, and just, he was just as, like you mentioned, professional, but just extremely nice. And, uh, one of the, and I spent a lot of time looking at this picture that I took with them. I think it was backstage before they went out. Um, they just put on their paint uh, and I got to watch that, you know, and just, just, they were just, just really good guys and hanging out with them for a bit at the bar and again, hearing a few more stories. It's just, I'll never forget that day for as long as I, I will live probably outside of uh, my wedding day and the day, the day my son was born, that was probably the greatest day of my life. I'll definitely say it's the greatest day of my life that didn't involve anybody in my family or anything. Yeah, non-family non, non related. That's, yes, that's yes. That's where we put it and stuff. So, um, so yeah, like I said, I had a really hard time with this yesterday because like I just, it, I was crying and I remember I was talking to my mom and just was telling her because I posted some things on Facebook and I called her and I'm like, mom, just like this, if you see some stuff on Facebook, it's nothing to do with me. And I explained to her what happened and, and stuff, you know, and she's, you know, she understood where I was coming from, but it was just, it was hard because again, nobody knew anything was wrong. And just all of a sudden to hear that, like, you know, this guy that you looked up to, this guy who was such a huge part of 
my childhood and your, you know, your childhood, you know, just all of a sudden is, is gone. And it's just, it, it just, I, I, I struggled all morning to deal with it. Um, I managed to get onto a uh, busted open radio yesterday to share the story that I told you about with, uh, you know, meeting Hawk and animal and actually, uh, and then that was really helpful as well too. So, um, just real uh, quick off the top of your head, what would you say would be maybe your – just give me a couple matches of the Road Warriors that you really enjoy. Well, I think the, I think the matches you enjoy are, are when they win because, <laughs> you know, right. when they, 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 when this, there are certain matches that stick out where you go, I can't believe they lost because they're the Road Warriors. You know, when they, when they fought uh, the Four Horsemen for the tag titles in Chicago, they're not supposed to lose. You know, or uh, war games. You know, think of that match, uh, yep. the, the match beyond, which you never saw before. So, I think the the matches that have really stood out to me is are just the ones that are just you know, epic matches that they did. You know, Night of the Skywalkers. Even though, um, you know, maybe it didn't turn out the the best match of the night. It, it's just the the buildup that they had. I mean, when you li- listen to Hawk and Animal talk, you knew they were going to hurt somebody. You knew that they didn't. You know. <laughs> we don't care. You don't like us. We don't care. I mean, the, the mentality that they brought in and their promos that they did. And these were two big guys that, you know, you see the um, articles in the magazines of how they worked out and how they looked. And, you know, it just, there's so many matches that they had, you know, I, I remember the, the matches uh, WrestleMania 13, the street fight, you know, because they were coming back. You know, that was that was the big thing. You know, the Road Warrior Pop, as they would call it in the business, where their place would explode. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of great matches the Road Warriors had. I mean, think of their, their matches in Japan, you know, for the international tag titles. You don't want to take away from that. Their career spanned so much, and they set a tra- uh, trailblaze of winning all these different championships when, they, when the companies meant something. You know, the other teams can say, oh, we won 26 championships, but... You know, how many times did you win that title? Did it mean something? You know, the Road Warriors had the look, had the dominance. And, you know, again, they always were chasing for the titles, you know, and, and they, were, they, they came up short, but, you know, but they came back and, and won the titles. I mean, think of when they finally won the WCW tag titles or NWA tag titles, you know, they had, they had to go ultra heel and beat up the, the Midnight Express out of yep. nowhere. With, and that was shot ringside. It wasn't even like a, almost like a, a real studio show. It was like, hey, this is what happened in this city, what they did. You know, it's just they, they, they were trailblazers of setting the bar. As Paul Elling says, they were the greatest of our time, the greatest of all time. You know, and when they could have Paul Ellering as a manager who is a proficient wrestler himself and, and weightlifter. I mean, I remember working out with Paul Ellering the day of dream night. Hawk and animal wanted no part of that workout. <laughs> you know? So I think the thing is, is that when you look back on the road warriors career, you know, it was a different time. The bar was raised at a higher level and, you know, everybody else tried to imitate what they did and nobody can, and nobody will ever do that. There's just like certain managers, you know, there's only one Bobby, the brain Heenan. There's only one Paul Ellering. It's just this, a magical time of, guys that were our superheroes. When I spoke at Hawk's funeral, it was like, uh, I'd say the same thing if I was talking at Animal's funeral. You know, some people have football um, players or baseball players as their heroes. Mine were wrestlers. And I knew my heroes could beat the living daylights out of their heroes. (laughs) And I think that's the thing. And, you know, today we, you know, we all uh, on Facebook, as you know, there's the the Road Warriors uh, fan page, which is Mm -hmm. uh, run by Paul Salaker, who is friends with, uh, um, Hawk and animal very closely. I talked to him and they have a lot of great videos and tributes and somebody else runs it. Um, you have uh, Chicagoland championship wrestling, October 3rd in Michigan city. I know some of the wrestlers who are, um, I believe youth gone wild uh, is going to be doing something about the road warriors that night. Myself will be doing something that night. Um, I don't know what Chicagoland has planned, but you know, I think they're going to do something because when you lose somebody in the business where, whether it's Hawk, Animal, Bobby Heenan, Roddy Piper, you know, the uh, Dusty Rhodes, you know, the list goes on. You're just shocked because 
when we were growing up, you never had a chance to meet these guys. You never did. You just saw them on television. That was it. You had no access to them. You maybe got an, a picture with them outside the hotel, but that was rare. But because of companies like PCW, when we brought them in, it hurts more because you have a chance to connect with your heroes and actually talk to them. And, you know, most heroes let you down in life. Mine never did. And I was very fortunate because Hawk and Animal and Ellering were always professional. They're always courtesy. And, you know, they did st stupid things here and there in life. But overall, they didn't let me down. I didn't walk away with a bad taste in my mouth. Like, I'm taking my poster off. I'm taking my hat off. I'm not taking my shirt off. I'm never going to wear the root with your stuff again. <laughs> you know, I'm wearing it with pride and honor. And mm -hmm. today, you know, um, and also uh, Collar and Elbow run by Al Snow. Uh, they have a design shirt uh, to raise funds for uh, animals family. So they have a design shirt. So if you go to collar and elbow, uh, there's a shirt that's designed by um, animals wife that all the proceeds go to uh, his family. So um, there's just a lot of love and support of childhood memories. And again, whether it's wrestling or any sport, anytime you lose somebody, everybody deals with it different, whether we're crying uh, whether we're posting it, whether we're taking our anger out in the world, you know, the, what life is a little bit colder right now because we lost our heroes, but we have to look at that. They're in a better place and they left us with great memories that we'll never forget. Right. So a couple of the things uh, like, and I actually watched uh, one of my favorite uh, road warriors matches earlier this afternoon. And that was when, um, they beat the Nasty Boys for the WWF Tag Team titles because that was like the first time I heard the Road Warrior pop. And just like, it was just amazing. Like the whole, you know, the whole place went crazy. And the one thing I'll always remember from that was Roddy Piper, who was doing commentary that night with Gorilla Monsoon and Bobby Heenan going, what a night, you know, and it's just, it really was. And it's just like another one that I, uh, another, uh, like you mentioned the stuff against the horsemen war games. Oh, that was just all really good stuff. But one of my, my favorite road memories of the road warriors was, um, the night they came back to the WWE, uh, back in 2003, when they did that one shot with, uh, versus Kane and Rob Van Dam. And I believe that was like a couple weeks before, uh, the dream night show. And it's just, and it was made me so happy because I knew about the issues Hawk had and stuff. And, but I saw, and it's just like, you know, it's kind of that same feeling that I had when, you know, I saw Jake, the snake show up on that episode of raw back in 2014, because it's like, he finally looks good. Like he's finally clean. He's finally where he should be. And it's just like that redeem, that redeem, like y'all got his redemption that night. And that was just something that'll stick out to me. And then just uh, one animal story I want to share. And then, you know, whatever else you want to say, you know, and then before we call it a, a night, um, it was at C2E2 this, this year. Um, he animal was there. Um, and I remember saying hello to him, you know, uh, cause he was at a booth, I think with like Tommy dreamer, I believe the nasty boys were there at some point. I think Raven was there, but I remember just going over to animal, just, in, you know, introducing myself and just saying, Hey, you know, really appreciate everything you've done and stuff. And I told him about the time that I hung out with them and stuff. And I think I remember the next day going back and he was there. And I gave him uh, a, a pit copy of the picture that I took with him and Hawk and Ellering. And he was just so appreciative of that. And it's just, just being able to share with him, just to, and to tell him how much he meant to me and just that day and just in general, what he did for me and what he did for my fandom of wrestling. It's just, just unreal. And it's just, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to miss him, but like you mentioned about the memories uh, he has, I mean, for those of you, obviously that have the WWE network, please do yourself a favor. Go watch a, Ro a road warriors match or two, go on YouTube, go on daily motion, basically anywhere you can get your hands on any, any road warrior matches do it because it's just, it's, it's the, it's going to, you know, help you deal with this. It's going to help you, be uh you know feel better about things and it's also going to preserve animals memory um paul any uh closing thoughts before we call the night well i think also too is keep this in mind too is that they they were able to do again the hall of fame which yes. is a big thing which i went to uh I see him uh him and ellering get put in the hall of fame and that was a very it was a very uh touching moment and you know i think my moments are my memories of the road warriors but also i think the biggest memory I'll have is 
I took a few seconds out during that match at, at Dream Night 2, and PCW, thanks to all the owners and workers and everyone involved in that show, we were the only company to pay tribute to the Road Warriors on their 20-year anniversary. That was the last time all three together. And I, and I wasn't involved in the match at all. I just stood up there in the balcony and goes, I was able to give something back to my heroes. Give them, and then we also did when, after Hawk passed away, we did bring Animal and Tom Hegstrom, Hawk's brother, into PCW to put them in our Hall of Fame. So that was uh, the last time Animal was actually in PCW when we put him in our Hall of Fame because um, he meant so much. And the Road Warriors did help legitimize PCW. So I think from going from a fan to, uh, to a friend uh, to work with them um, in a million years, if you told me at 13 I was going to manage the Road Warriors and become friends with my heroes, I'd be like, what? <laughs> Who? Me? Not me? <laughs> I mean, and, and that's the thing. And uh, a big thanks to Bob Moran and my friend in New York, because if it wasn't for him, this wouldn't have been put together. But again, I think the thing is that we all have to do as wrestling fans, just rally around together, remember the good times, not the political BS that goes on in the business of independent wrestling and in the bigger companies, but just remember what it was. And it's like being a kid at Christmas. We have to look at, we have to look at it as a fan, not as someone that has to try to find the magic trick of how they did it. It's just, just go watch the match. Just go have fun. See the road warriors at the best of what they were. And that's what they are. And, and no, you can, you can say there were better tag teams out there. Yeah. The midnight express, you know, the rock and roll express, the horsemen, you could list a whole bunch of other tag teams out there, the heart foundation, you know, but from an overall perspective, the road warriors were our team. And, you know, we'll always look at them as our heroes and they, they were the best of the best and they won championships. And that's what inspired so many independent wrestlers out there, inspired myself to get in the business. And uh, I told someone, I said, if it wasn't for the road warriors, there wouldn't be the Chicago connection and the connections based on that, you know, we'll never be the road warriors. We know that nobody will ever be the road warriors ever again. You can try, you won't, but you can, hold up that legacy of tag team wrestling. Um, look at the uh, Gotch brothers. They're coming October 3rd. Perfect example of a team that is a tag team guys that put their heart in the business. And there's so many other great teams that are out there. Um, Youth gone wild, you know, they put their heart in the business. Uh, there's so many solid tag teams out there that are trying to carry on the legacy of these guys that were larger than life. And when we meet our heroes, we don't want to let them down because we're held to such a high uh, level of expectation because Hawk and Animal believed in me and I have to be the best at what I am because they didn't put their time and energy into me as much as I did them. So so I, I thank you, Dennis, for, for giving this platform. But for all the Road Warrior fans out there, yes, our childhood heroes are gone, but the memory won't leave. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, so Paul, thanks again for joining me tonight. Um, I really hope that it, it it's helped you in some way because again, I know of your closeness to them. I know it's definitely helped me in that. Um, so uh, have a great night and uh, rest in peace, Joe Laurinaitis. Yep. Road Warriors. Thanks, Paul, for spending some time with me and sharing your stories of Hawk and Animal. They were really good, and it's always great reliving these uh, these memories that we've had over the years. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the episode, and uh, my sh shout out for this episode is going to go to the Laurinaitis family. Uh, your, your Road Warrior Animal was one of a kind one half of the greatest tag team of all time. And I just want to thank him. I want to thank um, uh, Michael Hegstrand, who is Road Warrior Hawk, for all the memories they've given me over the years. Um, I know your guys are probably up there tearing it up in heaven. Uh, and hopefully someday that I will be able to uh, say hello to you guys again. Uh, rest in peace, Joe.